just push me away and say, that's my seat. I don't like you because you got an ugly face. Have you ever thought about taking a step back from content? Yeah. Sneaky Sushi made a video. At some point, I was getting a lot of criticism. I think I just came out of a very public breakup. Mm -hmm. mm. Like the whole Singapore knew about it. Mm. Stylish straight up. So I just had a conversation with my dad yesterday and he's thinking of whether he should retire soon because he is getting older and may, he might want to take things easy. Oh, that's good, right? Then he can relax, you know, enjoy life a bit. No, you don't understand. My dad is someone who enjoys an active life and he always shared that he enjoys the fulfillment that he gets from work as well as sharing his experiences and ideas with his younger co-workers. I'm afraid that he might feel lost if he suddenly just stopped working. I see why you're concerned now. Mm. Hang on, why don't you ask your dad whether his company offers flexible work arrangements for seniors like himself who remain meaningfully employed but want it at a less taxing pace. Huh? What do you mean? Why would a company do that for an older worker like him? Oh, because of two things. The first is that because of their wealth experience, senior workers are assets to companies too. So redesigning and reorganizing their responsibilities or offering flexible work arrangements actually helps companies retain and tap on the skilled and experienced workers for longer. The second thing is that companies are legally required to offer senior workers re-employment up until they reach the re-employment age. At this point of time, it's 68 years old. So it's a win-win situation for both parties. Huh? Does that mean my dad can only retire after 68? No, no, no. It just means that employers must offer re-employment to eligible employees who reach minimum retirement age up until the re-employment age as long as they're willing and able to do so. So if your dad wants to retire early, so be it. Thanks for telling me. I can't wait to tell my dad. No problem. So if you want to find out more, we have an entire episode on this on our sister podcast, Are You Okay? Also known as... Ni okay ma? Link down below. You may have seen the 13 types of students after exams, but have you seen the 12 types of students during recess, the 17 types of students in an online class, or 13 types of people in Squid Game? Ooh. Well, 137 million people have. Oh. After starting his YouTube channel at 17, today's guest went on to be the first Singaporean YouTube personality to hit a million subscribers. He currently boasts more than 10 million subscribers across his YouTube channels and is known for being too old to play a school student anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore YouTuber okay. and the CEO of Titan Digital Media. Ten Hao Tan, welcome to the show! Oh, what an intro. What what an intro. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say 137 million? Mm, for those, for four, those videos, four videos. Man. Oh, oh, for those yes. four videos. He's like, cannot be there. Yeah. <laughs> in, in total, he has more than 3 billion views on this page. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they come down after. <laughs> <laughs> so something that was quite interesting was that I realized that before you were Tian Hao Tan, right, you were actually teenage gurus. Ah, yes. Yes. That was yes, we were yes, Z. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. So when you start, actually first started your YouTube channel, you were not even in Singapore at this point. No, in time. I was in Vietnam. I was in high school and I started it as a school project. So um our school project, uh, I learned how to edit videos and it was like um we had a cyber bullying campaign. So we <laughs> learned, we, I made a video about that. So that was quite funny. I mean, not, not in that way. It was just yeah. like, it was funny that I, that was my first video. Then yeah. we decided, hey, I really enjoyed this. Um, a few of my friends got together and we were the seniors in our school. We're like, hey, why don't we give some tips to our juniors? So first tip was how to cut the line at recess. It was very popular. Oh, it's so nigger higger actually. Or, or uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. And yeah, at yeah. that time, that yeah. was the thing. And then after that, we did um, how to cross the road in Vietnam. Yeah. So these two people that you actually started the YouTube channel with, right? Are you still in contact with them? Oh, very good friends. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. But when one went to Oxford in um, England, oh. one yeah. went to Germany University, and that was me. So I'm like, I'm taking the channel. Some people might not know, but you actually. If I'm not wrong, you were 17 when you first started your YouTube channel and then after that, you came back to Singapore to do your NS. Yeah. So what was that like for you? Because essentially, you had lived most of your formative years overseas right, in Cambodia and then I after did. that in Vietnam. I did. And yeah. then coming to NS in Singapore, was it... I'm not sure whether there was like a culture shock or like... Super culture shock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you live in international school for 11 years, right? And you come back to Singapore. It's a bit more strict. And when you go into army, when people like start shouting at you, <laughs> making you do push-ups, I was like, wow, this is a, this, like the day I enlisted probably was one of the toughest day of my oh. life besides the day I hosted speed. <laughs> <laughs> like when, when your dad revealed to you at some point that you knew now go, we're going back to Singapore. Uh, we always knew. You'll be conscripted. We always at, knew. At that point you want to like, chow or not? 
Ah, uh, no, I was like, I just suck it up. So yeah. when you actually, we talked about you moving to Cambodia and I mean, you actually were moved there because of your dad's work and that was when you were eight years old, right? What was it like for you, like as a child moving to a whole new country? Mm. And then how did you adapt? Well, it was difficult to adapt because it was a developing country at the time, especially Cambodia. It was really long ago. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I had no friends. Um, I went into an international school. Uh, my, on my first day of my international school, I just, just sat on a chair. One of, one of the guys, he just pushed me away. He's like, that's my seat. I don't like you because you got an ugly face. <gasps> the great tree, eh, primary tree. Eh. Someone yeah. say, like, says that to a new kid. I'm like, what's wrong with these guys? Yeah. So American movies all like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You always think that the script very cringe. Huh? No, it's real. And right. after that, how? As in, uh, you become survive? your best friend. Survive? <laughs> become <Nah>. your best <laughs> friend. <laughs> so like, did any of these like characters that you meet in school actually inform the 13 types of students? Like that kind of like scripting? Uh, no, not really. I think in our, in our videos, we're just like, ourselves, but yeah, very yeah. Exager mm. exaggerated. Yeah. Then after that, right, after staying in Cambodia for quite a few years, again, you had to uproot and then at this time move to Vietnam. Vietnam. Then yeah. was that difficult for you? Um, no, we, in Vietnam, I had, initially it was, moving is always difficult, but I had a lot of great friends there. And I think it was the formative years of my teenage life. So after that, it, we have, I've made quite a lot of good friends. Mm. And even after then, we started businesses together. Oh. When we, when I travel, they would host me in their country. Right. So it, it's not only convenient, but it's very nice to have all of them. Was yeah. there like a entertainer side of you uh, from young already? Yeah, there was. Okay. Uh, like entertainer, maybe not, but um, performer, like okay. uh, piano. Right, uh, right, perform. right, right. Piano, so music, violin, drums, yeah. Right, music. right, right. And then how did that kind of like bridge to YouTube? I don't think that itself bridged to YouTube. I think it's more like passion to create like uh, videography. Like I think my parents always vlogged us when we were kids. Oh, okay. Right? Cool. Camcorder style. Yeah, camcorder mm -hmm. style. So we have so much footage of me as a kid. But uh, with the music, the music helps so much in emotions and storytelling. Right, right, right. right. You so play violin, drums piano. and piano. Yes. Ah, sick. Whoa. Like wealthy. I would say quite well. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, quite well. Then if you, when you look back at these early days, right, what would you say was the biggest challenge back then? I, I think convincing people to work with us, yeah. And and also permits at that time. Like, and that, no, honestly, <laughs> like, <laughs> filming, <coughs> filming in Singapore as a YouTuber at mm. that time mm. is impossible because you oh. got, the camera is this big, right? Mm. And you aren't like Media Corp where you can just, you know, a uh, video call. production yeah. house, yeah. get a permit, right? Yeah. Now with with phones and everything, people are so used to like Instagram stories, all this, you know, getting their stuff yeah. filmed everywhere. But in Singapore at that time, very new. Yeah. yeah. So very hard. Right, during this, that time, right, when you ask for permission to film, they ask you why, right? Then this simple question is so hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we're gonna film here, we're gonna do this, we're gonna slap this person and what you found your shop, okay or not? Why? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, it was yeah. hard to <laughs> Why are we doing this? So, uh, <laughs> Views, I, I bro. Like, <laughs> no, it's just called, it's not. No one's paying for this. <laughs> so eventually, I just said school project. Yeah, uh, that was the main excuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. to our mothers yeah. and our yeah. clients. Yeah. School project. So at what point? So like, you're, you're, at first, you're making videos with a couple of friends, and then after that, you take it on and you make videos. At what point did you realize like, hey, actually, this can be. My job, this can be forever. Firstly, I, 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 I hoped it was forever. Yeah. So there was always that, that goal. Mm. Right? But when I realized it could be possible was probably when I made uh, money from it yeah. for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I think my first ever campaign was a Durex campaign. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> With Gush Cloud. I've been there when you yeah. I think yeah, you were. Same. I think yeah, you yeah. were. I think yeah. I have a good impression of you yeah. this time. Ooh. Yeah. It's uh it's normal. Do you why, think it was why so? Do, why so? Yeah. To be honest, I never really interacted with you. I just heard that you were difficult. I still am. Actually, the first time we interacted. Actually, why? Uh? Why did I go your I don't know. Uh? I have no idea. I also don't know. Why. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was one time we met when we first started Gravity not long only. Then I don't know how we somehow got connected. Mm. Um I think we got talked before in Gush Club, but it was just yeah. on a need to basis. And then you say, yo, why don't you come and see my setup? They're like, okay. It, it was like a like a terrace house. And and then there were just people working in the living room and in right. different rooms and all that stuff and really like sweatshop style. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when we had meeting, like we wanted to sit down and chat after he gave us a tour of the space, which is impressive to be honest. It's 
for a, for like back then he was building his YouTube channel. There is no Titan Digital Media. There's just YouTube channels. And it was impressive like the operations he got. And then when we had a meeting, right? I thought we were going to go into like a meeting room. Then we just went outside. Then we just sat down on the floor outside in the sun. Then we just like sat down on the floor. Then we just like talked about business. And that was our first like real chat. Whoa. Yeah. In Singapore, there is quite a, quite a default route for a business to grow mm. from, you know, to become a private limited and all mm. that with all the grants. But in, in my head, I didn't know much of that. And to me, I just did what was most practical. And the most practical thing when shooting YouTube videos is that you relate to your audience. And to relate to your audience, you have to shoot a video in your house because that's where most people watch the videos from, not from mm. the office. So I could have an office, right? I could have an office that looks... Uh, quite industrial or quite mm. nice. I could do that. But my audience are people f watching from home. Mm. So I want them to feel like relatable. So when you first started, right, I think you shared in another interview that you have this group chat that still exists that's called the Piano Room. Oh, and yeah. that's where the original, I think four or, four yeah. or five of you yeah, were writing scripts and doing everything. Yes. And Ridwan... Yes. was sleeping on the balcony. Because he chose to. <laughs> because he chose to. Not because I made him do it. Important disclaimer. Yeah. Can you tell me like what that period of time was like for you? Uh, it was great. We didn't know what was going to happen, but we knew that we love creating content. Mm -hmm. it, it really seemed like crazy at that time. I would just abandon everything and like go all in on a YouTube channel. Your or, parents okay? My parents were okay. I mean, wow. they, they, they gave me a time to prove myself. Okay. How did you formulate that, that game plan for that year? What was that? Like, do you formulate it in NS and what was it? I didn't formulate a game plan, but all I knew was, uh, I think I, I, at the time I was really good at marketing. Mm -hmm. So I would just market myself as a, as a product. I would think of it as like a, let's, let's say if I were a product, how would I market myself? And then mm -hmm. just continuously create this YouTube channel and keep building on it because it stacks. Right. Yeah. So and 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 one thing is, I I really studied the algorithm. So at all points in time, study the algorithm, see the way it changes. Right. So what was the algorithm favoring at that time? At that time, it was really just posting as much as possible. Right. And the and the kind of content that you're putting out at that point of time. Honestly, I I, I don't even remember. I've done things from <laughs> music videos to right. parodies to uh skits mm. to so just reactions not yet i have not done the <laughs> 10 types yet so it, it takes a long while to find yourself as a creator yeah because there's so many out there how do you differentiate yourself because yeah. if you're not better than your competitors if you're not faster if you're not more informative then what are you you're just yeah. another one in the sea yeah and so you were doing this on your own first or you immediately I, I did started? it with friends. So I, I did it with Redon. Redon had his own channel as well. Yeah. I had Dan and Vincent. Persuaded one of my friends to join me. His name was Dan. He's my first employee, but also a really great friend. And I told him to join me, but um, he had a job at Mediacorp, which I was like, bro, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> and then what's so what the transition like? Because when you make your first hire, suddenly it's like, okay, it's legit now. Like yeah. My first one was the small directs. Uh, my first big, break on YouTube, the first ever client I got was 15K when I was 21 years old. <sighs> Who came out with 15K? You quoted or they offered? Uh, Sylvia Chan. Because <laughs> uh, ah. like, She closed time, for you? Uh, yeah. No, okay. no, no, not she closed for me. We, we closed, we actually closed it together. Right. And mm. we were like, how much 15, we, we, take, we take a look at it. Yeah. Try. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, what? Yo, Close. Yes. That's Yo, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I first joined the industry as well, it was an agency to help yeah. sell people like y'all. Mm. And I saw the numbers and it's crazy. It yeah. was during that time, yeah. right, where we go out there and it's not about why the creators I represent are better. It was what are creators? Uh, yeah. What yeah. Are it was tough because we had to convince them. Now yeah. we don't have to convince already. Like people already want to work with us. Yeah. But at that time we have to convince them like, hey, work with us over working yeah. with other traditional. Yeah. It's not who am I, it's what is this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, so with yeah. the 15K, um, straight away, I rented a house. Wow. A condo. Mm. That's where I wanted to operate. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So I did that for about one and a half years, but it, it got too big. So we moved into a bigger place, which was a landed house. It sounds like a really good environment for creativity to like yeah, flow. Yeah. Like. Super vibes. When I walked in, it felt like, <laughs> like what as I a, think as a, a Silicon Valley startup. Yeah, as a, right. like a garage oh. company. Yeah, wow. totally. Okay, when you made your first official, that 15K, that big yeah. paycheck, right? Then you spent it on like a house, maybe upgrading your camera and all this. Mm -hmm. Eventually, when you made your next, when you had your next big payday, right? What did you spend it on? Computer. But at that time, YouTube's, 
ad revenue was crazy, right? No. So wasn't it that were, wasn't that the main source of income? No, no at the time no. there isn't the the creator program just started only actually. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, at the time yeah. it just started. In Singapore right, was not right, covered right. yet. Generally in Singapore CPM is very low. Yeah. So it's never changed like, until now it's still having sponsors and, and client deals. That, That's always the biggest. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So that was about like, if I'm not wrong, 2014, you had 200, about 250K subscribers. And then within the next four years, right, there was suddenly quite an exponential yeah. growth. So you hit a million subscribers in 2017. You were also featured on Forbes 30 under 30. And then that was when you founded, you founded Titan Digital in 2018. And started managing talents essentially. So you very, very quickly, right, went from having a few hundred dollars in your bank account to buying your dream car, a yellow Maserati. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like for you? Like, did you have to, were you splurging? Like, because was there this mm. lifestyle inflation because you just suddenly as a 20, 23, 24 year old, right, have all of this money. What do you do with that? Um, yeah, I, will, I was splurging. <laughs> 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 I, I I think calc calculated. Um, was risk. it really that calculated? Yeah. Or buy and panic? I think with me being, I mean, now if I'm 30, I buy a Maserati, it's like whatever. Mm. Mm. But I knew oh. that me as a 21 year old buying a Maserati yeah. would, you know, would really rub some people yeah. the wrong way and they would start getting like, ah, this kid, you know? Yeah. So okay, yeah, okay. I mean, th that's one of the ways that I wanted to, break into the whole YouTube scene because that's mm. that that was the YouTube culture at the yeah, time. Yeah. Like what 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 else am you I? You were trying to do? be I show speed. Yeah, no, I was trying yeah. to uh, trying to be different. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. So one way was to do that, one way was to move out. Right. Mm. And those are the, the things that I did. For a lot of audiences, you you paved the way like actually buying a Maserati showed that actually YouTube can can be an actual job. It like, can. Mom, yeah, yeah, check it it's out. It's like insurance yeah. agent, but he was yeah. flexing for the whole industry. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah a real yeah. trillion. In fact, tell them how much you bought the Maserati for in 2017. <laughs> Is it probably a Honda Civic today? Wow. I think it was 100k at the time. Oh. What? Oh, sorry. It was 100k down payment. 100k down sorry, payment. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes so oh. much more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. At some point, I was getting a lot of criticism, like you said. Mm. And like, it got to me in a sense where I felt misunderstood because these people are not watching my content. Mm. They are reading my titles. Yeah. Right? And like as a creator, like you can say shit about my 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 work, it's fine. But if you're not watching it and you don't understand it, then you know, it's it's very hard for me to accept when someone says something like that, but not know what they are talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is why I came out to explain, which mm. got even more more heat than to me, I'm like. Okay, then Sneaky Sushi made a video about how Singaporean YouTubers are all the same. Mm. Me, NOC, I think at the time it was Wild Banana, so I'm not mm. sure. He, he completely like ripped open the whole YouTube scene with that video. <laughs> and, <laughs> I mean, you already yeah. think about life. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think that's when the YouTube scene changed because of him. Like, oh. So that's when it ri ripped open the really ripped over the YouTube scene. Now. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, right, I, I felt like there was a good opportunity to just stick through it, make it mine. Right. Yeah. Cause okay. the other YouTubers were like, oh, he's right. We should you know, change yeah. it a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, okay. But so, you double down. So if I if I double down, that means that I become the king of listicles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So right, you actually did keep you and Debbie's relationship kind of private for a, a yeah. long time and then why was that? Um, I think I just came out of a very public breakup. Mm -hmm. mm. Like the whole Singapore knew about it. Mm. Mm. So at that time, um, there were fans of that relationship that did not have the closure or could not move on from it. Mm. And I just didn't want, you know, anybody to be on the back end of such, such yeah. comments. Mm. So I just wanted to, you know, keep it, keep it low key for a while. Yeah. Okay. Do you think you struggle with, so for yourself, right? Do you think you struggle with keeping certain things private versus public? Like how much, where do you draw the line to how much of your actual life to show? Yeah, the lines are very blurred and sometimes it's difficult to differentiate. Mm. Yeah. And even within myself, like sometimes I have to be in business mode. Mm. Sometimes I have to be in creator mode. Mm. Sometimes I have to be in debt mode. So just 
shifting between the three is already difficult. Mm. And to add uh, another layer of what is public and what is personal, it becomes very, very tough. Mm. So for me, I just like, okay, whatever's uh, in my life, whatever needs to be public can be public. No? So over the years, right, what would you say is the craziest thing you've done for content? <laughs> oh, I don't do crazy things for content. I don't. Like for, like for me, th- that's my one thing that I don't like to tread on because then it, you go down a slippery slope of mm-hmm. just continuously trying to find the more crazy, the more dangerous thing yeah. to do, mm-hmm. which is not my style. Like for me, I prefer storytelling. Mm. So if it takes a bit slower to get, um, you know, a better payoff, then that's what I would do. Mm. Yes, and I think I remember someone telling me because they, they pointed it out that somewhere along the rise towards 1 million subscribers at that point of time, yep. you started including subtitles that were foreign languages, including like dubs as well. Yes. I think you have Indonesian dubs. Was Indonesian. that a very intentional move to get to over a million yeah, subtitles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I'm very numbers guy, I'm very motivated by numbers also. So when you see yourself at like around 800K, you're like, oh, well, I'm going to do everything and get yeah. like one mil. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what I did was I, I got tied up. So yes. my Because the thing about our videos is like, uh, it's, it's not very local. Mm, yeah. So it can be interpreted in many languages. So we got Thai and we got Indonesia, but the Thai did really well. So okay. the Thai audience actually, we eventually had more Thai audience than Singapore audience from our Thai channel. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So one video maybe was averaging around 800K for, for our videos. The Thai one would get like 5 million. <sighs> yeah. Oh. Oh, well, but it's not just subs, it's dub. Done, it's, it's dub. It's yeah. dub. So it's to get the translation and then to get a VO artist to like... Oh. Is this done by a local agency or you have people no, on no, no. At the time, he did it for free. Right, because he's a fan. Thai, yeah. So it's even... Right. So you can't even QC because like you, you don't know the language. I... I oh, you I, I grew up in international school. Right. So I do have a few classmates from Thailand who will help me with the subtitles and the QC. Oh. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. So then eventually we did Vietnamese as well. Yeah, yeah. And then we did Indo. Mm. And now we do Hindi, Spanish, wow, Arabic, Thai. Capture the Indian market, the South American market. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Actually, the Spanish market is one of the biggest. So, right, I reached recently because, I mean, we had the opportunity to have you on. So I started going back to watch some of your more recent videos. And then I'm like, oh my God, this video title sounds exactly the same as something that I've seen quite a few years ago. And then I, so I clicked into it because I think maybe he's doing something different. And I was right. So, right. It's not actually a listicle. It's essentially a huge TV series that is happening. And then these videos are like 15, 20 minutes long, uh, by the way. And there's an entire storyline. In fact, it's a whole cinematic universe, right? And they have like fandom wikis to break down all the characters, uh, who like who, and then what is this organization that's coming in and changing the game. And then it's like, I'm just watching one episode by one episode by one episode. And it's just packaged with the listicle title. Right. Yes. So... We package it as a listicle titles because we look at the algorithm and psychology. Okay, the thing about psychology is that if you put numbers before something, mm. usually people will click more because it's more direct. You're directly marketing something to it. Like they know what to expect. Mm. If you have a very ambiguous title, it wouldn't work. Mm. Yeah. So for YouTube, because of the the search with the, the search um, engine yep. where you can search for videos, this formula works best. For mm. us, mm. yeah, we've we've tried to deviate a bit, but each time we did, it didn't work. Our content changed, but our titles had to stay the same to make sure that we still get the viewership. When we started YouTube, there was a time where all the YouTubers did it. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm In not. Fact, a, NOC uh, started this shit, right? I think Wild Banana did. Mm. Oh, seriously, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I think at that time we did a lot of collaborations. There was us. There was Wild Banana. There was Dan Koo. There was Joseph Germani. There was Genie Boy TV. Yeah. So the, uh, between Singapore and Malaysia, uh, to us like that was really really collaborative. Yes, yeah. like so nice. Like we were all just collaborate with each other, learn from each other, and we learned so fast. Mm. We learned so so fast. The, like within two years, right, all of us became so pro. Yeah. And the production quality really increased a lot. And like the friendly competition really helped us like, you know, motivate mm-hmm. us to keep creating, keep innovating. That was really fun. But then it, it came where everyone was just doing the same thing. And it started to become who's doing it better. Mm. Right. So I, I thought of how I could be different. So first thing is to keep consistent characters. Mm. So the other channels... 
they had actors that played dif- different roles within one video. For me, I was like, okay, if you're going to be like the nerd, you're always going to be the nerd for mm. the rest of the video. Second thing was after around 500k um, subscribers, I wanted to go international. So mm. um, I had to force the actors to speak in not so singlish accents. N- neutral accents. Yeah, neutral accents which could be understood by every country. Mm. Yeah. So once we started doing that and we collaborated with one of my friends, Kim Kim Lee, our international audience shot up yep. to about 1 million and you started to see that there's more US audience than mm. Singapore. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, then there's more US, there's more Australia, UK, Canada. And once Was you Was there had, anything you did to actively put your content in front of those audiences? Yes. yes. So... We would, we would make uh, references to British current affairs, references to American trends. So such and, like And uh, we would even speak Hindi in our right. videos. Wow. Like if you see some of our videos, we speak Hindi because we started getting so many Hindi fans and Indian fans that were like, oh, we want to, you know, mm. do something for you. Mm. Yeah. So once we reach such a la- large audience and in every country, when you have a little bit of audience, right, then boom, it just keeps growing exponentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like planting your seeds in each country. Yeah. So now that it's been so, you've been in the game for so long, right? Have you ever thought about taking a step back from content? Yeah. I, I mean, of course. Like, it, it's very tiring to shoot like every week and to like script like th- three days a week and then mm-hmm. edit. You are doing the scripts video. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it would be nice <laughs> to take a break, but the mm-hmm. algorithm doesn't favor it. So at, at no point do you think of or, or, or decide on high, like maybe trying hiring like a couple of script writers or it's just something that you always just want to make sure that you're doing? I, w- I would love to, right. but I think our format is so different, you see. So it's it's not like normal TV format. It's it's like a little bit of YouTube, a little bit of uh, human side, but also yeah. a little bit of TV. Mm. And the people who understand it the best would be the people who have been involved in the project for years. Mm. Mm. So we, we, I've tried to hire external. Yeah. And it did not work well. Mm. So enough. at the end of the day, it's me and it's Vincent who works with me. Mm. Mm. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Which yeah. Vincent you got as an intern, right? Remember? Yeah, he was my first intern. Yeah, the thing about this is we cannot just write based on storytelling. We have to write based on retention, meaning drop off. And the, the structure is not just how do you tell a good story. Mm. The structure is how do you keep people watching your story, whether it's good or not, and yep. eventually make it good. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can I ask yeah. about your thumbnails, right? Because I think people have noticed that it's quite similar to Mr. Beast once. Oh, and yeah. he has talked about how they can spend like full days, right? Just yeah. going through iterations of like 20 different versions of the yeah, thumbnail. Yeah, we do that. You do that? Yes. So maybe not 20, yeah. but uh, uh, more than 10. Wow. wow. And so we'll do of- A-B testing. So on the first day of the video, we'll test between two, two thumbnails. And the winner of that one will be tested against another one. And we'll oh. just keep repeating that formula until one really is the better one. And in terms of yeah. the winner, because like uh, YouTube just recently released like the feature to be able to test thumbnails as well. Yeah, but, but we had that feature from an external website earlier. Right. Uh, but what metric are you looking? Because I know for the YouTube one, they're looking at retention based on thumbnail. Are you looking no, at no, clicks no. or retention? Uh, we're looking at click-through rate. Yep. So the retention doesn't really matter from thumbnails. Yeah. Retention is more of how you make the content, but yeah. the click-through rate is when you click on exactly. like how when when it showed to you, yeah. how many people will click it, the percentage mm. of that. Yeah. yeah, so that is usually title and thumbnails, mm. which is why we name our titles like uh, 13, because I feel like 12 is like, it looks too round. Too clean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's too round. No, yeah. should they then, say weird then, numbers yeah, work better? Yeah, so mm. yeah, yeah. Like you have so to say I four. Weird. Yeah, yeah, say five. I, absolutely. Yeah. Then 14 mm. is too sharp. So I felt like 13 <laughs> is just, just nice. Uh, 11 so it's is, mostly yeah. 13s when you do it? It's all 13s. It's all 13s. Oh yeah. shit, I didn't know that. And yeah. the title is 13 types, right. but it's never 13 in the videos. Right, right, yeah. right. Do, oh, yeah. So you, you talk about A-B testing thumbnails, but do you also A-B test your titles? Like, do you make changes? Yes, we do, we do. But there isn't, there isn't an engine to A-B test the titles. Yeah. So yeah. we can only like follow yeah. like day-to-day like click-through rates. Right, right, right. Can I ask, right, when you started Titan Academy, mm-hmm. the series, right, did you think it was going to go on for nine seasons? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the first video, it was just a joke. And then we had like Thanos as the principal. And it's like a really bad green screen. 
Then, like, it did so well that we did another one and people just, like, really liked the characters because, as I mentioned earlier, like, yeah. if you are going to play, you know, if you're going to be in the video, you have to mm. stay one character. Mm. So yeah. we just did another video with the same characters and just people just really enjoyed it. So, and somehow it became a series. Because you, you commit and then you develop each character for, yeah. like, seasons, right? Not yeah. just episodes. And which was one of the hardest character you've had to exit on your show? Uh, I, I don't think there is one. Uh, there's one character called Cleverly, but when people or big characters decide they don't want to be part of it anymore, that's when you can really make them legendary. Like mm. give them a good send off and people will remember that. Like yeah, right. um, when I was younger, I watched a lot of TV series. Right? And the formula I always see is when somebody is about to die, suddenly everyone cares about them like the yeah. episode before and yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. few episodes before. So if we're going to send off a character, make that character suddenly become oh. a very heroic mm. and main character and then yeah. kill it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like you got a lot of experience killing. <laughs> As in, do people actually die in your... No, no, no. Yeah, we okay, try okay. not. We, we try to keep it lighthearted. They resign from they, the they school. Yeah, school. Yeah, okay, 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 we try okay. to keep it lighthearted. I actually met Debbie at a pet groomer's. Yes. Because she was working there. Yeah. And how do you go from that to... Then after that, how you get the girl? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks later, when I see like, oh, grow a little bit more. Yeah. Like, wow, faster, faster, go to the groomers. Uh, no, really? Yeah. Yeah. So then, at what point did you like confess? Ooh. No, like, I don't think you went to confess. <laughs> no, because like, coffee, not, like, at which then point she you... keep wondering why this guy keep coming back to cut yeah. no hair, right? <laughs> and then what? Uh, so basically, we just started talking online. Uh, follow each other, talk, and then um, like, hey, you want to go for coffee or go to her school? Mm. And have coffee. And on the Saturday, I invite her to the Halloween party. Oh. Uh, that's actually, it's it, like, your, your it's wife being the person that grooms your dog. Uh, it's, just, it's quite, yeah. it's quite yeah. sitcom. So then after that, the, the grooming become free. Yeah, it, it became free, but <laughs> I, I forever hold a grudge for her selling me a $85 comb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can she you believe it? She you a comb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, she you, buy it. <laughs> yeah, but you had to buy it because you wanted to buy it. I had to buy it. Then he said, can I pay installment every time I arrive? He keep going back. Other than Titan Academy, right? What do you think is the most memorable thing you've most memorable project you've done? Oh, I think my family channel. Mm -hmm. I think like creating memories with yeah. my daughter, and I think it's so so nice that she can watch the videos and like bring things up oh. in conversations. So like you know how they say when when your kid is like two years old, three years old, there's no point bringing them anywhere yeah. because they won't remember it. Yeah. Well, if it's in a video, she remembers it and she yeah. talks about it. And like, sometimes when you have conversations with her, she'll just randomly say like, uh, remember that thing in Malaysia? Yeah. yeah. Did you debate um, putting Stali's face online? No, there was no debate about that. I mean, how are we going to hide it? Is it because I think there are a lot of creators, I mean, over the more recent years, I think family channels have drawn a bit more flag, right? Because they say, oh, your kid can't consent, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And was this a concern for you? Like, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, one thing that I make sure with my daughter is that if I'm making content with her, mm. it has to be fun. Like we're just filming her. Like, I'm not going to like force her to say anything. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to force her into doing anything. Mm. And there are a lot of times where I'm like, filming, filming, filming. she's like not having it. I'm like, Okay, so we're not going to upload this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is why you can see the family channel, like it doesn't have a regular schedule because mm. we, we just can't do it. For, right. It's like whenever she wants to do something and she, in fact, she loves making content, which is really nice because she sees me do it, right? Mm. Yeah. And she's like, Baba, shall we make a TikTok? Wow. <laughs> and, and she started doing that at two years old. Huh? Yeah. Wow. So it was, it was, it's actually quite crazy because she held a camera when she was like two plus yeah. and she knows how to operate the whole thing. Right. What? Uh, Does she have a sense of like the popularity or the fame that you and I guess her like she has? I think she she does. She, but she she is absolutely indifferent to it. Yeah. Yeah. Like she does not care. Like she mm -hmm. and and she does not like. Uh, it, it, she it must see mood one uh. Like sometimes she don't like to take photos. Yeah. Mm. Sometimes she likes. Sometimes I mean, it has to be like What yeah. you want her to do? Like be humble. Uh. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, because like, I guess like in when you're out in public, like are there people that come up and say, I mean, I think to take a photo with you, that's a different story, but do they want to come and take a photo with yes. her? And like, yes. what's your approach to that? So most of the time, she will only do it if there are kids. Oh. Like, oh, my kid wants to take a photo. Then she she, she just comes in a photo. But there are times where it's like somebody older yeah. and they ask, can we take a photo? Can can Stali be in the photo? Stali just doesn't want to. And I'm like, sorry. Yo. Okay, wow. okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. There was also one time in a cruise where a lady approached Stali for a photo herself. Like, Stali, can I take a photo with you? Stali straight up. <laughs> I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> you think you got train her? That's not nice. Sorry? Do you train her for these I things? I don't. I don't train her for any media thing. All I can teach her is manners and yeah, values. Yeah. Yeah. But that's very good. That her <laughs> automatic. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so good. I was this, shocked. This is the of the shop. <laughs> candy shop. Okay, so uh, <laughs> Stali also recently turned five, if yes, I'm not wrong, she five. about two weeks ago. Happy belated birthday if she's watching this podcast for some reason. 20 years later. 20 years later. And I think you mentioned in another interview that you don't think you've changed much before and after becoming a father, right? But what would you say is the biggest lesson you have learned so far in the past five years? I would say um, that time passes really fast. And when time passes, you will never get it back. Mm. I think that's, that's the biggest lesson I've learned over the years. And there were so mom- so many moments where I wish I could be more present, but uh, I'm just doing too many things. And if I were if I were to have a choice, I would probably say that maybe I shouldn't do so much. When was if you don't mind me asking, it was Stali a planned decision? No, shotgun. So when it happened, then yeah, what was the shift you made in your head? I I, I knew <laughs> I always wanted to marry Debbie. Yeah. Okay. When I got with uh, her. Yeah. So for sure, like, I mean, it's a no brainer. Mm. Like we, we celebrated, we were very happy mm. when we, when we saw the pregnancy test. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What is something you are excited for or looking forward to in 2025 now that we are coming to the end of 2024? I haven't thought so far. Oh. Just thinking about like, what, what am I doing like next week? So what are you doing next week? I have to go to France. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So yeah, so we're, we're, we're showcasing Titan Academy to a lot of buyers like Netflix, Prime, and- Wow, uh, cool, great. Wow. It's just showcasing. No, uh, it's still, like a, still, it's, yeah, man, still. Wow. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Thank you very much for watching today's episode and a big thank you to Tien Han for joining us and being thank so you. open with his YouTube secrets. <laughs> yeah, we will take notes. See you in the next episode. Like, share, subscribe. Bye-bye. I don't know why I clap. <laughs> I just so impressed with <laughs> 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 I play Len. Usually I just do this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like last year got a bit like lack of creative. So we decided to like drop a piano on a car. Huh? Uh, <laughs> I see. Hold up, wait. <laughs> yeah. So I actually have a video. Uh, I, I think it's called Types of Drivers. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah I think you can find Types it. Of Types drivers, of Drivers, but it's about cartoon dropping. Cartoon, dude. Wait, where, where did you film this? In Singapore? I tried, but... The I permit. Think, yeah, the permit. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, you should have done it in USS. Uh, <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.